but you you will likely to get that topic asked in some way so that's will be our aim to cover that uh, topic uh, in relation to that mcq uh, question number 2 who is taking it so mukul will be taking first five and then nagarjun will be taking the next five sir okay mukul you carry on then so the total following study design represents a level 3 evidence study Mm -hmm. uh, uh prospective and randomized control trial retro prospective case control study uh, retro prospective uh retro retro prospective case series prospective cohort study level 3 evidence study is uh, um randomized uh, randomized control uh, option a sir prospective randomized control trials okay so uh, if you have a hierarchy of evidence uh, what will you put on the top mukil or you can start from bottom or start from the top so let's start from the top what are the top most evidence uh, forget about okay. level 1 level 2 what are in your mind what are the top most evidence just a case series sir Case no. series is three. Case series, case series will be quite lower down. What do you understand okay. by case series? Sir, the top most evidence will be uh, randomized control trials. Yeah, the gold standard is randomized prospective control trial. That's the gold standard. Yes, and that that is yes, any uh, any study you want to do that. Uh, nowadays, on top of that. also we got now what we call systemic review and meta analysis which is actually analyzing many of the randomized control trial studies yeah so th those those three are systemic review meta analysis and randomized prospective randomized control trial are the top of the pyramid yeah then come next yes, level of it next level is whatever is prospective so you can't randomize it but you can still have a prospective studies so which one is the prospective studies prospective study normally the cohort studies are prospective study yeah so the yes, d, d will be the yes, level 2 then come what come under level 2 is where you got some kind of a control you you have a cases and you have got control but unfortunately this is always a retrospective so the level 3 will be case control retrospective Yes, yeah? sir. yes sir and and then level 4 will be your case series yeah case series yes. no no all, almost always case series retrospective so case series will be down it because in case series there is no control only case yes sir so the the evidence will be much less and then and level 5 come if you individual case report or expert opinion those will be the least one yeah So, yes sir this is what you need to know we got a full lecture on evidence uh, medicine uh, in the conceptual orthopedics yeah go through it yes, and then you you will understand it the most confusing thing is people know what is case series people know what is case report people know what is randomized control trial what people struggle is to know what is the difference between case control and cohort yeah so mukil yes. do you know the difference between a case control study and cohort study sir the cohort study is a prospective study which compares a study group and a control group sir but yeah. a case control study the cases should be compared with the previous evidences sir we should retrospectively go and take the same kind of cases we have to compare that that is case control study sir yeah first thing is that both case control and cohort have some kind of a control but it is not randomized yeah so that's why they are okay. not ra randomized study they, they are we control we select naturally in that population uh, there one is retrospective normally which is your case control which go backward that mean you start with the disease and then you find what is the link of it with the risk factor yeah whereas in cohort yes, you start with the risk factor and see how many of them will get a disease so this is the one yes, thing you, 
you need to remember for your exam or for your uh, viva about these studies. So in this case, which will be, what is it talking about? Which level it want to know? Level three. So which will be level three according to you now? So top level is randomized controlled trial, meta-analysis, and systemic review. Then below that is a prospective cohort study. So level three will be case control retrospective. Okay, sir. Yeah. Level four will be case series, and level five will be expert opinion or case report. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, so that's what you need to remember that in a cohort, we go prospectively and we, we exposed half the group to a risk, half we don't expose to a risk. So if you want to uh, suppose the risk is smoker and your outcome is a lung cancer, so half with the smoker, half non-smoker you choose as a control. You're not randomizing them, you're picking up people who don't smoke and people those those smokes. And then follow them for three, four, five years, whatever your end target is, and see how many of this, this group develop cancer and how many in this group. And then you can know whether smoke, smoking is linked or not. So that is your uh, cohort study. What you do in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a case control, you start with the disease and go backward. So you have people with a lung cancer and no lung cancer, and then you go back how many of them were smoker and non-smoker, and then you compare the rates. Yeah, have you understood the two studies? Yes, yes sir. But this study is is, is uh, less uh, evidence, less better, uh, uh, poorer evidence compared to this, where you're going prospective. So this will be level two, and this will be level three. Yeah, and since you, if you if you would have here. Uh, randomize your people that uh, without knowing them smoker or non smoker if you randomize them then that become a randomized control study yeah if you yes, would have say that i will pick up 100 people and 50 i'll make them smoke and 50 will not smoke yeah and then i will progress then that will be so there is then your control is there on their randomization so that is a different thing here you picking up naturally smoker and non smoker so that is the difference between uh, cohort and non randomized studies so case control and cohort you need to understand what is the difference and just one more point which again i have discussed in my uh, video uh, about evidence that in case control you want to know the odd ratio of uh, uh, of developing the disease by that risk factor in cohort study, you, you because you start with exposure, you calculate the relative risk of that exposure. So if you if somebody asks you what is the statistical values you take in the two, in cohort, you calculate relative risk. In case control, you calculate the odd ratio. And it will be clear if you uh, go through the video again, which is there on the conceptual orthopedics. In terms of where it fits on, as I already told you, Meta-analysis, systemic review, and randomized control, top of the pyramid. Whereas cohort studies is the next, then case control is next, and case report, case series come very lower down in the in your pyramid. Okay? That you yes, need. Sir. You need. This can be sometime. There are other uh, more than five. One A, B, one B. Don't go into that detail. Just remember these five. That uh, systemic analysis, uh, meta-analysis, Systemic review, randomized control, uh, level one, cohort studies, prospective level two, case control studies three. In four, just remember case series, and in five, put your expert opinion and and case report. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Remember, remember, remember that. As I said, they can be a bit overlap with from where you reading it, uh, but these are generally accepted uh, in your exam. So let's go for the next one. Sir, vitro, vitronectin is an important receptor involved in which of the following function. Interacts with RANC ligand to stimulate osteoclast. Osteoclast attaching to the bone. Competitive inhibition of RANC ligand. Chemotaxis in fracture healing. Type 2 collagen formation. Sir, I will rule out first uh, three options, sir. Mm -hmm. And uh, among D and E, 
I will uh, withdraw netting. I actually uh, I will go for option E, sir. Type two collagen formation. Yeah. So this is your complete tukka, or you know something? Sir, first three is will not be there, sir. That I know, sir. But I read about something, but actually I never heard this words. So I choose E, sir. So again, again, we have got a a, a a a lecture on on basic science lecture, two part lecture, and I will request you to go through that. That is again in conceptual orthopedics, where we have in detail uh, showed about the function of osteoblast and osteoclast. Again, this is a very hot topic. You can be asked in the exam, how does osteoclast work? Yeah. So, uh, how, what is the role of osteoclast muscle? Osteoclast will cause bone resorption. Bone. Where does it come from? Osteoclast come from the hematopoietic stem lines and from the monocytes. Monocyte, monocyte macrophage monocyte. series. Yeah, it come from yes, there. Sir. And how does it resorb the bone? Sir, osteoclast primarily produces uh, hydrogen ions and carbonic anhydrase enzymes it will produce sir. and by the tartrate resistant acid phosphatase enzymes it will produce and it will cause bone resorption with the help of the catepsin k it will cause uh, the degrade the organic matrix yeah so inorganic and organic matter it has to degrade inorganic by acid and organic by because they are protein so many proteinases yeah yes sir so a generic name for them is proteinases. They can be cathepsin K or metoproteinases, metalloproteinases. So a lot of name can be given. If you, even if you just keep it simple, acid for mineral part and proteinases for protein part, that should be enough. Yeah? Yes, sir. Yeah, so this is how it, but before it actually secrete that acid and those proteinases, it has to attach to the bone. How does it attach to the bone? Sir, it uh, osteoclast attached to the bone with the help of uh, don't know sir uh, yeah so, so there is a part where it is attached to bone called intergrain yeah yes sir. and and for that attachment this receptor important receptor is called vitronectin okay sir. okay and yes, when when it attached there what does it do? It it completely seal the bone all around it because otherwise this hydrochloric acid and the proteinases it is it is producing it will flow away everywhere. So it make it like a watertight seal there by attaching with this intergrain and vitronectin is one of the receptor for intergrain. Yeah. Yes. And then yeah, when it start dissolving in that uh, uh, where it is attached, what is that portion of the bone course? That portion of the bone is called the uh, rough uh, how ship la how ship lacuna, lacuna and uh, and uh, the the ruffled border is just to increase the surface area in, towards the hashup lacuna. The it get polarized that lot of uh, ruffled border uh, are formed where it's attached so that lot of lot things can be excreted in that small sealed area. So you can be very efficient in dissolving your mineral and protein. Yeah? Yes, sir. Yeah. So that's what you need to know how the osteoclast works. So it is uh, now if you go back, it is what is the answer? Uh, it helps in attaching the osteoclast to the bone, to the, to the integrin. To the integrin. So if you see, see it, can, can you see that when it, when it comes, it attaches there. Can you see it here? Yeah? Yes, sir. Yeah. So if I... Uh, and get my pen there. So here is the, it is attached by integrin. So it has completely sealed this hoshup lacuna. Yeah. Yes, so this yes, is sir. your hoshup lacuna. It has completely sealed. And now it will release here your acid to dissolve the mineral. And it will release some proteinases to dissolve your proteins. Yeah. Yes, yes, and this whole thing is your hoshup lacuna. But first it has to attach and seal it. Yeah. Like there. And this is controlled with your vitronectin. Okay, sir. Okay. And then yes, here, it is for all these are, it is forming these granules full of these proteinases and they come and adjust and secrete it here. And because you want a lot of surface area, like intestine have a lot of villi to absorb, here also you got a lot of these to secrete this. Yeah? So, yes, so, so that 
the surface area of this if you spread this is much bigger than this just this area yeah so that's why you got this ruffled border yeah it is yes, only sir. in the in the in the polarization is only where it is attached to it so see it is attached and now it is secreting these proteinases uh, which can be catepsin k or mmp or whatever it is and hydrochloric acid so proteinases and hydrochloric acid are released and then it is absorbing the bone so you need to know about that yeah so just yes, to read sir. that uh, that is uh, somebody has written for you so better to read it what is it yes sir vitronectin assists osteoclast to attach to bone osteoporotic ring decreases the osteoclast differentiation by its interaction with the ranchial receptors ranchial uh, receptor activator of uh, nf kappa b ligand opg is made by osteoblast and bind with the ranchial the rank ligand to competitively inhibit rank binding rank is a receptor on the rank is a receptor on the osteoclast that when activated by the ranchial stimulates the osteoclast ranchial is found on osteoblast also transforming growth factor beta induces the mesenchymal stem cells to produce type 2 collagen and proteoglycans it is important in the early stage of the fracture callus formation petri derived growth factor is involved in fracture healing So, so it is uh, yeah. All okay. it is doing is ruling out all other options. So somebody who's made this has given you this answer. So it is ruling out that uh, rank L is not important for vitronectin. Uh, neither is uh, rank L ligands competitive. That is OPG. Chemotactic and fracture is a different phenomena, and type two collagen is produced differently. So it's trying to tell you why it is B. Yes. Yes, sir. you understand that okay yes sir okay so let's go for next question then 